This was a young male, somebody who could get into the house and get out in that neighborhood without being seen. No one who knew the victim or victims knew the layout of the house, uh, knew how to get entry into the house. There was no indication of a forced entry. No. I don't think it was two people because the more people you had going into that house, the more likely that it is that they were going to be seen. So I think it's one male young enough to have been in that neighborhood. Um, he had to be somewhat confident that... Reporter Room with Jessica Della Davies starts now. Welcome to Reporter Room. My name is Jessica Della Davies. Today we're going to be talking about the number one clue we all missed in this case. I'm also going to talk about DNA evidence and how long it would take for law enforcement to get this evidence back from the labs. We're also going to talk about the 113 pieces of evidence that law enforcement was able to collect. This is all critical information that you will want to have, so please stay with me until the end of the video. Everything I'm sharing with you today is my opinion, and opinions are not facts, so please don't send any negativity to anyone. Let's be kind to each other. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a live stream or a new video, and give this video a thumbs up so I know you were here. So let's talk about the number one clue we all missed. And then I want to share with you information about the DNA and forensic testing and the 113 pieces of evidence that law enforcement has collected so far. The number one clue that we all missed is that law enforcement has not offered up any type of reward money. And in my opinion, this suggests that they have viable leads and probably a viable suspect. They may be waiting for DNA and forensic test results to confirm this. We've also learned that law enforcement has brought original people in that they interviewed and they are re-interviewing them. So this tells us that they are trying to get their ducks lined up in a row. So what are rewards for? The point of a reward money is to elicit new information and move investigations forward. Most often, they're used at the end of an investigation when all of the leads are exhausted. And the fact that a reward has not been offered suggests to me that law enforcement either has a viable lead or a viable person of interest, and they are not nearing the end of their leads. In fact, the Moscow Police Department has asked the public for help in tracking down the people who were inside a white Hyundai Elantra in the wee hours of November the 13th, the day that Ethan, Zana, Kaylee, and Maddie were found. And I'm going to talk about a statement that FBI agent or former FBI agent Jennifer Koffendaffer made to the FBI in just a moment, so please stay with me. So police believe that the people in the car may have been near the house where the students were later discovered, and they feel that these people or persons have, quote, critical information, end quote. But in the absence of a sudden development, law enforcement, they are relying on forensic techniques to solve this case. Now, this is a time consuming process and this case would be unusually complex because of the number of victims. And Jennifer Koffendaffer says, quote, this is a case that only the most experienced crime techs can solve and answer. Now she worked for 25 years as an FBI agent and she investigated a variety of different crimes and she feels like it's quote going to take a long long time end quote now i'm going to talk about the fbi and 113 pieces of evidence that police and the fbi have collected in just a moment so please stay with me but jennifer Koffenduffer also said uh, to nbc news that the forensic investigation may be complicated by the chaotic nature of the murders and the layout of this particular house where the victims were found. We know that the second and third floor were additions. So we know that the ground floor would have been insulated a lot more heavily because that was originally an exterior wall. And then the second and third floor, there was an add-on 
and you can see here in this photo how that looks. Now, collecting and processing hundreds of DNA samples and then looking for a potential suspect's genetic profile can take weeks or even months. And the Moscow Police Department has called the state police and they're also utilizing the FBI. And they have charted the victim's final hours and ruled out a number of people as suspects. They ruled out the two roommates who were in the house at the time. They've chased down unsubstantiated leads. They've tamped down speculation and rumors. And let's talk about the DNA technology in a forensics case. What can we expect? Advanced DNA technology makes it possible to obtain conclusive results in cases in which previous testing might have been inconclusive and this can result in identification of suspects in previously unsolvable cases. So let's talk about this evidence because we know law enforcement has collected 113 pieces of evidence but they have not provided more details. They said they've received more than 5,000 tips by email and voicemail and more than 1,000 quote digital media submissions end quote. And, and it's worth being aware that the analysis of this type can take police some time in a typical case with no surrounding factors. It takes around six to 12 months for results to be obtained. So, we know they collected 113 pieces of evidence. We also learned that the victim's hands were bagged to protect any potential DNA under the fingernails. And in investigating a crime like this begins with securing the crime scene. And this has already been trampled through by witnesses and the first patrol officers who arrived on the scene. However, Investigators did go through and document everything that they saw. They took photographs, they wrote notes, they created 3D scans. Next, they moved through the scene and they swabbed surfaces for DNA and fingerprints. They collected samples of tissues and blood and looked for clues where blood was found. Now, we already know about the handprint that was found on the outside of the glass. So, with four victims and multiple bedrooms and multiple floors on a house, each room would have become a crime scene unto itself. Basic details have not been released about the exact location of each victim. We don't know exactly which order. We think that it was Zana and Ethan first, and then whoever did this moved upstairs to where Kaylee and Maddie were sleeping. Police have not publicly theorized on how the perpetrator entered and exited the home, but we know that there were no signs of forced entry or property damage that would allude to the fact that somebody forced their way into the house. So it is reasonable to assume that either the sliding glass door was popped open or we know the house had a key code. Somebody had the key code. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.